Hello guys, when you take a look on eBay at N20 gear motors, you see you have a lot of choice in terms of RPM, torque and voltage. If you want to use the N20 motor as a drive motor, your voltage is going to be set by the battery that you choose for your model. The torque, you just want as much torque as you can get. But the RPM is important because you don't want lots of torque but your model is really slow and you don't want no torque with your model being really really fast. So today we're going to figure out what kind of RPM a CQ motor is and then we'll relate that to our N20 motors. So after we've worked out the RPM I'll show you how to calculate what the final speed of your of your model will be and uh, you need to know the diameter of your wheel so that you can work out the circumference calculate the final speed and we'll work out the um, the kind of scale speed so the model is going to be a certain speed then you have to multiply that by 32 to get what it would be in reality so that way we'll be able to work out uh, the final speed of our model but to speed things up I've made a little calculator on the website so you can follow the link in the description and that will bring you to the calculator where you just need to know the RPM of your motor and the diameter of your wheels and it will give you the the scale speed and the real speed so then you'll be able to know if your model is going to be at a realistic speed so the first motor we're going to check out is kind of the standard motor that I always use it's the motor from a CQ Control 32 uh, Fent 930 so this is kind of the benchmark this gives a very nice speed for the Fent and the Massey so this is kind of the speed that you want your motor to match so at 3 volts uh, most of the N20 motors are kind of rated in 3, 6 and 12 volts so I've the power supply here set to exactly 3 volts so at 3 volts we are taking 62 milliamps so 62, around about 62 milliamps to drive this motor, 60 milliamps, okay so all I'm going to do is count how many revolutions we get in 10 seconds, multiply that by 6. So we're going to start now. So I got around about 12 in that 10 seconds. So I'll do it one more time just to uh, be sure. So we start now. Yeah, I got 12 again. So we got 12 revolutions in the 10 seconds for this motor. So that works out to 72 RPM. So this is around about 72 RPM motor. So now let's check the other CQ Control 32 motor. Okay, so let's do the same test with the motor from the John Deere model, I think it is. Uh, this one is taking 40 milliamps at 3 volts to drive this. So that would suggest to me that there is more resistance in the gearbox in this motor than there is in this one. Because I'm pretty sure the motors are identical. So the only difference can be in the gearbox. So there must be less resistance in this gearbox than this one somehow. So again we're set to 3 volts, so we'll just count the uh, revolutions again. So we start now. So this motor got around about 13 revolutions in the 10 seconds. So that works out to around about 78 RPM. So 72 for this motor, 78 for this motor. Let's just say 75 is kind of the output speed that you want for your RC tractor then. So the final motor to test is the N20 gear motor. Now, when I bought this one, I think it was 30 RPM at 6 volts. So we should be getting quite a lot less than 30 RPM when we're at 3 volts. So keeping them all at 3 volts so that they're comparable. Now, straight away we have a huge difference here. This motor is only taking... 14, 15 milliamps to uh, to spin here so 
you know that's a huge power save and your motors or your model is gonna run a lot longer but uh, let's check out the speed here so I'll start the stopwatch now so that was around about 3 revolutions in the 10 seconds so that's 18 rpm at 3 volts but we're taking much less current to do the same work than we did with the other motors. I'll see if I have a faster N20 motor. We'll just check the current to get the same speed. Because if we can get if we can get 75 RPM from one of these motors and uh, you know maintain the 15 milliamps, that's a huge saving on power. Your battery life is gonna last much longer. And I'm pretty sure these are a higher torque motor than the CQ ones. So you're going to have more power, which means the motor won't be loaded down quite as much. When you start to put the load on, this is obviously going to go much higher than the 50 or 60 milliamps. I can't remember what it was now. But it's going to go much higher, and this one's going to go much higher than the 15 milliamps when, when they're actually loaded down. But um, if you're starting off with a lower current, you're bound to have a lower stall current too. Okay, I have a slightly faster motor here, and this one is taking 20 milliamps to run. I'm not sure what the cell rated this motor as, but uh, we'll do the same little test. So I'll start the stopwatch now. Well, I got 9 revolutions in the 10 seconds, and that works out to about 54 RPM. So that's roughly 54 RPM at 3 volts and it took 20 milliamps to drive this motor so a little bit more than the other N20 but still quite a bit less than the uh, CQ motors so if we were able to use these to be power saving the only thing about this taking less current than the CQ motors is that if I was going to be using these motors I would probably use two of the the flip type ones that I used in the track John Deere model so I'd put the two motors back to back and then uh, I'd have one motor driving each rear wheel so that would mean that you would have kind of a software based differential so you just slow down one motor when you try to take a corner for example so that would make the model much better handling and also you'd be able to simulate having two separate brake pedals so you could just stop one motor and drive on with the other motor if you wanted to try and you know simulate uh, having separate individual rear brakes like Okay, so now we know 75 RPM is around about what our motors do. So, so we've around about 75 RPM. Um, now we need to relate that to the speed of our models so that we know what sort of speeds we need. So maybe for smaller wheels you want a faster RPM, bigger wheels you want a slower RPM. So we're going to take 75 to be the RPM of the motor and we're just going to work out the different speeds for the different models. So we have the Ford 7810, we have the JCB, and we have the uh, Massey 8680. So, let's say 7810, JCB, and uh, 8680. So we know our RPM, so we need to know how much distance we cover with each RPM. So to work that out we need to know the circumference of our of our wheel. So the uh, circumference of a circle, I'm sure you all know, is 2 pi r. So that's that. Now we need to know the diameter of each of our wheels. The Massey wheel is around about 69 millimeters. Our JCB has the diameter, we, we call that 36. And our 7810 Call that 50. So that's obviously our 25. The radius is 25 millimeters for that one. It's uh, 18 for this one. So the R here is um, 34.4. So we call the distance covered in one revolution L, and um, that's 2 by pi by the radius. The first one is 25. So each revolution we're covering 157 millimeters with the 7810 wheel. We're 
covering 113 millimeters with the JCB wheel, and we're covering 217 millimeters with the 8680. Okay, so so we're covering 157 millimeters in one revolution with the 7810 wheel. So we know we have 75 revolutions in a minute. So we would cover 11,000. We call this L2. Be 11,775 uh, millimeters per minute. Okay, so that's every minute. So if we multiply that by 60 to give us an hour, that means we call this L3, I guess. 706,500 per hour. So that's 706,500 millimeters per hour, which is 0.7065 kilometers per hour okay so we need to multiply that by 32 so with the 75 rpm motor we're getting a top speed of 22.6 kilometers per hour for the 7810 the full scale 7810 so if this model was full scale we'd be traveling 22.6 kilometers per hour with that model so the JCB would cover 508,500 millimeters uh, every hour, which is 0.5085 kilometers per hour. So that's what the model would do. So if we multiply that by 32, we get 16.272 kilometers per hour if the JCB was full scale. So finally, the 8680, which will be closest to what the um, motor was designed for. It was designed for Fent 930 this motor. So we cover 16,275 millimeters per minute. Multiply that by 60 is 976,500 millimeters per hour. And that is 0 0.9765 kilometers per hour. So basically, if you were to set this model, the, if you were to set the Massey 8680, uh, going on the road, you would cover almost a kilometer in an hour if you um, if you had enough battery life. So let's see what the real machine would be travelling at. It's obviously going to be around about 32 kilometers an hour. 31.248 kilometers an hour is what this 8680 model would be travelling at if it was full scale. Now, three volts is maybe not the full speed of the motor you could probably go to 3.5 3.6 volts without much trouble which would make the um, model a little bit faster than this so that's probably not an unrealistic speed for the um, for the model really so a quick look on google there and the real top speed of 132 7810 was roughly 30 kilometers per hour <coughs> so if the top speed of the real tractor was 30 kilometers an hour and we were only getting 22.6 we we're getting around about 75% of the actual top speed. So we need to increase the RPM of our motor. To work out the RPM we need is actually very simple because if it's 75% of the top speed, so we divide the RPM by 75 and multiply it by 100. So obviously we need a 100 RPM motor for this tractor. So this tractor would be more realistic with a 100 RPM motor. Looking up the JCB, we find that the real top speed was 36.2 kilometers per hour. So that's the speed we want to achieve, but we've only got 16.27. So the speed that we're getting with our 75 RPM motor is 45% of the goal. So if we divide our 75 RPM by 45%, and multiply by 100% we find that we need a motor that is 167 rpm so to make the JCB a realistic speed we need to get a 167 rpm motor for this uh, for this model so for the Massey 8680 the top speed was around about 50 kilometers per hour so that's a, a goal speed for our model. Now at the minute we're getting 31. So our speed of 31.248 km per hour is 62.5% of 50 km per hour. So we need to divide our 75 
by 62.5 and multiply that by 100 so we need a 120 rpm motor to give us a, the actual top speed of the of the model so as you can see these motors don't actually give us the realistic top speed of the models but is it really gonna be noticeable not really I don't think it'll be too bad the, the bigger tractors are going to go faster you see the bigger wheel higher speed than the smaller tractor that's pretty realistic the JCB might be a little bit slow uh, because of its pretty small wheels but is it worth the effort of building an N20 gearbox for that model I mean the JCB is going to be a complex build as it is do you really want to add extra complexity by coming up with some sort of N20 drive motor uh, arrangement for that model or are you just happy with it being slightly slower than the tractors personally I'll probably be happy enough with the JCB being a little bit slower I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal but if you if you really wanted to be accurate this is how you'd work out your uh, different RPMs for your motors that you'd need to achieve realistic speeds so on the website I've added a page that has a little calculator so you can work out the RPM of the motor that you need so if you wanted to work out the RPM that you'd need for this model you would measure the diameter of the wheel on the model you'd enter that into the calculator in millimeters you'd do google search for the top speed of a Ford 7810 a real one and um, you put that into the calculator and it will give you an RPM that is the RPM that the axle needs to spin at to achieve that speed in the 132 scale so that's how you work out the speed of the different motors it's a little bit overkill but um, if you want it to be super accurate that's how you do it uh, I don't really think there's any need for it really um, uh, in this scale it's probably not really going to matter too much if you did have a, one of these motors that's 75 RPM and you wanted to get to the 100 RPM you just need to up the voltage some way so maybe you just add a bigger battery or something like that and get the motor up to a higher voltage I'm not sure what the limit on this motor is I probably I wouldn't put it over 3.6 volts but that doesn't mean that that's, uh, that's the limit of it maybe, maybe it's good to 6 or 12 volts I'm not sure the N20 motors are good to, um, good to 12 volts so I don't know I don't think I'd push that more than 5 volts anyway so if you found that video useful make sure and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to go and check out the calculator on the website the link is below in the description if you have any questions on this head over to the forum and I'll do my best to answer them if I can that's pretty much everything so thanks very much for watching